Yo, it's Elliot with Yo Elliot. You got strength questions and I've got your answer. Yo Elliot. Today we've got a great video from our friend who's sharing some of the resources that he's using to become the strongest version of himself. Check it out. Yo Elliot. Um, all right, my name is Bill and um, I live in the UK, as you can probably tell by my accent. Um, just wanted to say, really, really, really love your videos, man. Um, you're obviously a guy with a very similar um, approach to training and life to me. Um, and so I wanted to make this little video for you. Um, this, uh, um, it, it's not really a question. Um, it was more actually some recommendations, some books I thought you may find interesting. Um, as you can tell, I'm uh, very similar to you in terms of, in terms of uh, reading a lot. Um, neuroscience, physiology, philosophy, um, tons of training books of all kinds, um, and tr nutrition, trying to find a holistic approach to life, basically, and becoming, in your words, the strongest version of myself, um, which I think is a great goal for anybody. Your life becomes richer in so many ways. Um, couple of couple of books anyway that I thought you may find interesting you may already have them who knows um, uh, I've seen a lot of your stuff um, about the uh, central nervous system um, great book why zebras don't get ulcers goes into the whole sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system um, and stress and how it affects the body um, very very interesting book um, I think you may enjoy it another one um, I know you've already got this. I can I can tell. Um, the Warrior Diet, brilliant um, in terms of um, uh, getting your hormone balance right. Blah blah blah. If you haven't got it, great read. Um, this little bit off the wall, the brain that changes itself. Um, this is all about neuroscience and neuroplasticity and how. Um, uh, certain types of brain training can you you can actually create new neural connections throughout the nervous system through the brain through certain types of training mental training very very interesting book um, and can can be really helpful in terms of your approach um, to training your mind not just your body um, and finally um, primal body primal mind um, this was released last year by Nora Gedgaudas and I would have to say this is this is one of the most comprehensive and best books on nutrition I've ever come across. Um, it talks about a lot of the things you talk about. It talks about um, f uh, fungus infections. It talks about ketosis. It talks about um, um, uh, genetics, anthropology. Um, it's um, it's just an incredibly in-depth and interesting book. Anyway. Um, I just figured I'd give you those um, because, you know, you give so much away, um, free to other people, and um, I thought you may find these things interesting. Um, anyway, um, great to open up some lines of communication, potentially, from someone from another country. Anyway, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, you've got some great information out there, and um, I really, really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. My friend, thank you for that video. It means a lot that you sent, sent that to us and thank you for sharing those resources with us. You know that I'm obsessed with reading, especially on the topic of becoming the stronger version of myself and using that information to support my clients and you through these videos. So I will be going to Amazon and getting some of those books that you just shared with us. What I wanna do for you today in, to reciprocate is to offer two of the resources that I've been using to study a topic that I am obsessed with and it is called, it's a form of psychoanalysis called body psychology, uh, more specifically bioenergetic analysis or therapy. The two books that I want to share with you and then I'll tell you a little bit about what you're going to learn in them are uh, Character Analysis by Wilhelm Reich, which is really the foundation, the, the first text on a lot of the things that I'm going to share with you. It was written uh, probably about 60 years ago, maybe 70 years ago, and he was a student of of Freud and basically he took a lot of uh, Freud's ideas with regard to sex and psychology and turned it into what you're gonna 
learn today about how the mind and the character and the, the psychological character actually manifests itself physically in the body. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Um, a student of Reich's was uh, Alexander Lowen, and this is his, one of his books. He's written 13 books. This is called The Language of the Body. Two of my favorite books right now, uh, among several others, but these are going to afford you the foundation for some of the stuff that I'm studying, if you're interested. Um, and, by the way, this is going to be a big part of what I'll talk about on my next YouTube channel, my other YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below if you're not subscribed to that. I haven't put any videos up on there yet just because I've been busy writing books for you guys that are associated with strength building and I want to make sure I get that out of the way before I, uh, I start sharing this stuff with you guys because it's a bit more complex and not everyone's interested in it. So, anyway, like I said before, the idea here is that the psychological character manifests itself physically in the body. And you know that the mind and body are connected by simple things as how you carry yourself based on your emotions. If you're upset, you're depressed, you literally slump over, your breathing shuts down, your eyes dilated, your eyes dilate, your heart rate goes down. All the physiological and physical changes that happen based on a mood that you're carrying. A lot of us have predominant moods or characters that follow us throughout our entire lives and, phys and we physically take on that character. This is, if it sounds crazy, it's like, it's, that's, it's that fascinating. It's incredible stuff. So I'm going to share with you four of the major character types. And you may even see yourself in one of these characters. Uh, with each one of these character types, I'm going to describe what happens to the body and the injury that caused it, psychological injury or the neurosis that causes the body to take these particular forms. And uh, before I get started, you know, you might say to yourself, well, you know, isn't a lot of this genetic, the way someone looks? Yes and no. It's a, it's a nature and nurture situation. You have a predisposition to certain character types, but if the environment is not correct for it, it may not come out. But if the environment is perfect for the predisposition that you have, based on your genetic heritage, and also the ideas that have been carried through your family, then you're a shoe in and this will happen to you. And I have lots of friends and family members that fit into these characters, uh, structures, types. The very first one I'm going to talk about is the schizoid. The schizoid is an individual who seems like they're kind of up in the air. You may talk to them and their eyes don't catch yours. It looks like they're in a dream state. They're, they're, very, they're usually very light. They're very skinny. Their legs are usually very, very weak. Uh, a couple of the other things that you might notice about this type of person is that they're, they're sort of fragmented. Their body looks fragmented. It, they may look broken. In other words, one part of the body, like say the upper body, may look like childlike. You know, like a grown man who has like a no hair on his chest and it just looks like a baby's like or a child's body. And then the, a lower body that's obviously a man's lower body, you know, it's a, it, it looks more, a bit more mature. Or vice versa. Another thing you might notice about their, their fragmentation is that their arms may not seem like they're a part of the body. They're walking but the arms don't move or, uh, or they may be shifting from one side to the other. If you look at them straight on, straight on, it might look like they're twisted. These are generalizations, but basically, like I said, lacks eye contact, fragmented body, energy moves up into the head. They're in a dreamlike state most of the time. Injury was early rejecting, rejection by the parents. So what that basically means was that when the, your mother became pregnant with you, there was an early rejection. Basically, she didn't want the baby, right? That's, an, that's a form of early rejection or the baby comes and, uh, and it is a burden to what the parents are trying to do in their lives. Maybe they're partiers, maybe they're drug addicts, maybe they're uh, high profile CEO types that just don't have time for children and the kid just kind of got in the way. You were an accident. Yeah, you know, it, the reality of the situation is that a lot of us are accidents and, and the rejection, the psychological rejection by the parent while you're in utero will cause the schizoid type character. The next one is the oral type. You'll see a lot, I've got friends, and you'll notice a lot of people who are the oral, more oral type in our society. There's a lot of oral deprivation, which I'll describe in a moment. This type of person has a collapsed chest. It almost looks like someone punched them in their chest and sunk it in. You might notice that. You'll also notice that their arms are very uh, brought forward and tight, and they can't move at the shoulder very well, and the neck is elongated. So they look kind of like this. And I drew a little picture here. The butt typically tucks on there, and it's almost like their body's in a C 
tight shape. So like I said, uh, collapsed chest, rounded shoulders, elongated neck, early deprivation of nurturing. Happens a lot in our society because, you know, mother has the baby and she has to go to work. So the baby never gets breastfed, which is, you know, if, you're, if your child is not breastfed or if you're not breastfed, that's a huge form of early deprivate, uh, nurturing deprivation because that contact with the mother is missing. So you're stuck a plastic nipple in your mouth and sent off to the, uh, to, to the daycare. That will create a situation of oral deprivation. Also, maybe a parent that was uh, distracted, maybe you were the second of the, or, or a later child in, the, in the, uh, the, the family. So what happens is the mom's super busy taking care of the other kids, or maybe one of the other kids are sick, and you don't get the attention that you needed as a child. So the oral character structure st starts to take place. There's a lot of information associated with all this. I'm giving you guys just a brief overview. Grab the resources if you want to know more. The next character type that I'm going to share with you is the masochist. The masochist is an individual who looks sort of squashed down. Their head looks like it's set on their body in absence of a neck. A lot of times they'll be very uh, overly muscular, and I don't mean bodybuilder muscular, but like just thick heaviness of the body. Maybe very strong, strong legs, uh, or very fat. They're basically turned in on themselves. They've got a thickness, a heaviness, and a compacted look and feel in their, in their body and in their character. Uh, the way that character structure takes form is with a child, when a child's assertion is suppressed. So basically, the, their rebellion is shut down quickly by the parent, an overly smothering mother, generally, um, early uh, potty training, you know, not giving the child the freedom to express itself. You know, when this happens generally around the age of two, that they call the terrible twos, because that's when the child is trying to and learning how to assert his or herself. The final character structure that I'll share with you is the rigid type. This is probably the most prevalent in our society, and this individual is just is generally healthy looking. They've got good looking bodies, um, but they're tight. They're rigid. They're they're neurotic, for lack of better terms. Um, they've usually got a tight belly don't breathe very deep into their pelvis or into their stomach. Their energy is usually pulled up into their neck and shoulders because they're very tense. So not very much sexual feeling. In men, this is typically called a phallic narcissist. In women, it's called the hysterical type. And the injury that's associated with it, it comes from feelings of guilt and shame about sex. Uh, another resource on that is uh, fear of life also written by Alexander Lowe and it's all about the rigid type. The majority of you guys that are watching these videos and women who are watching these videos who are into fitness and are go-getters, type A uh, individuals are probably going to end up being the rigid type. And, uh, and like I said, it's a form of neurosis and you can learn more about it in The Fear of Life by Alexander Lowe as well. So that's it, man. I love the fact that you're sharing your ideas with me. You know how much I love this sharing of ideas. If you're not on my Facebook, uh, fan page wall, you got to get on there because I'm constantly putting out books, pictures of, uh, of different quotes and things that I enjoy because I love ideas and, and the idea that I am really involved in greatly right now and want you to, if you're interested in the ideas, to go out and get are these resources by Reich and Lowen. Like I said, my next YouTube channel, I'll be talking a lot about this and I'll also be talking about physiological strength and also my strengthology certification is all designed around being able to share these ideas and show you the exercises because there are exercises that are associated with breaking up the tension and freeing the energy and freeing the breath in the individuals who have this muscular armor. So, uh, so that's what strengthology is all about in its later levels. So that's it. Dudes, thank you so much. Keep sharing ideas with me and I'll keep making these videos for you. Talk to you next time. Yo, Elliot.